Hello and welcome to section Deploying App Volumes in a Microsoft Remote App Environment. As we discussed in previous sections, the key feature of App Volumes is that it is not just restricted to working with VMware technology and products. App Volumes is not just limited to working in a virtual desktop environment either, so it can also be used to deliver applications to servers that in turn deliver application sessions or published applications to end users. So in this section, we're going to look at how App Volumes integrates into a Microsoft Remote App Environment. So what we're going to cover in this section. In this section, we're going to focus on the steps required to build and configure app volumes to work in a Microsoft remote app environment. We're going to start by configuring the RDSH server role on a server that we will use as a provisioning machine to which we will capture app stacks from. As part of this, we will also install the app volumes agent. Next, we're going to provision applications using the newly created RDSH server. Once captured and provisioned, we will then assign the app stack to another production-ready RDSH server in the example lab environment, where we will complete the RDSH configuration by selecting the applications from the app stack that we want to give to our end users. Finally, we will log into the desktop and test that we can launch an application as an end user using the app volumes layered application. Before we move on to the first video, we're just going to take a few moments to recap on what the infrastructure would look like in an RDSH environment. As with the process described for building app stacks for use with virtual desktop machines, the first part of the process is to build a provisioning machine from which we can create our app stacks from. Remember, app stacks need to be provisioned using the same operating system as they are going to be delivered to. So in this example, the provisioning machine will be a Windows Server 2012 R2 virtual machine configured with the RDSH role. This provisioning machine will be used to create an app stack containing Microsoft Office, and once created, this app stack will then be used to deliver applications to another RDSH enabled server. This could also include a Citrix Zen app server or Horizon View app server, which we will look at in later sections. Once the app stack has been created, it is then assigned to the production RDSH servers, attached, and then the applications configured and published to the end users. So let's move on to the first video of this section and look at how to add the RDSH role to the provisioning server and also to install the app volumes agent. So in this first video, we're going to describe the process for building the RDSH server that will be used for provisioning app stacks. From there, we will complete the tasks required to prepare for provisioning the app stack by first adding the RDSH role and then installing the app volumes agent. The steps described in the diagram on screen outline the tasks that we are going to complete in this section, starting with the build of the RDSH server using our VMware vSphere platform as a base. They are in the order in which they should be completed. It is important to note that when to install the app volumes agent in particular, which is highlighted in orange, along with the other app volume specific tasks. In this video, we are going to cover the steps from where we add the RDSH role to the provisioning server and then install the app volumes agent. We're going to start by installing the RDSH role onto our RDSH app stack provisioning server. Just as a reminder, you need to capture app stacks from the same operating system. So in this instance, it will be a server 2012, and we will install the RDSH role onto this server first. So from the server manager dashboard on the server, we're first of all going to click on add roles and features. Then click on next on the before you begin page and for installation type we're going to choose the remote desktop services installation and then we're going to click next. We're going to choose quick start as the deployment type so we can create some default published applications and then we're going to click on the next button and then on the deployment scenario we're going to click the session based desktop deployments and then click next. Then we need to select our server, which is already selected here. This is our rdsh-prov.pvolab.com server. So we need to make sure that that's in the box there. And then we're going to click Next to continue. Now we can see the confirmation page of what we're going to install. We're going to install a connection broker, RD Web Access, RD Session Host. And then we need to check the box for Restart the Destination Server automatically if required. When you're ready, click the Deploy button and then the server will now go ahead and install the remote desktop services onto this server. So now we can log back into the server as our administrator account and type in the domain and then the administrator password. Once we're logged in, the installation will continue. 
So now the installation of the RDSH role has completed and we can see that each of the individual components has succeeded. So we can close that and now we can see our remote desktop service is now up and running and also we have IIS running so that you can connect to a browser and launch a remote app. So the next stage we're going to do is we're not going to configure any applications yet as we're going to do that using app stacks. So actually what we're going to do is to provision our app stacks we need to install our app volumes agent. So we're going to browse to the shared folder where we have our app volume software so slash slash dc vmware software and here we have our app volumes software so we're going to click to the iso image mount the iso click on installation and then double click setup so this is just a normal installation of app volumes that you'd perform on any other machine whether it be a server or a virtual desktop operating system so here's our app volumes installation wizard window so we click next to continue click the radio button to accept the terms of the license and then next we want to install app volumes agent so we click the radio button and click install and now we see our app volumes agent installation wizard so we click next the first thing we need to do is enter the IP address of our app volumes manager so this is our 192.168.1.40 We'll leave the app volumes manager port default and we'll check the box to disable cert checking. Click next. When you're happy with the summary of what we're going to install, so the IP address of the app volumes manager is correct, the port details are correct, then we can go ahead and click the install button. So now the agent is being installed on the server. Once the agent has finished, we're going to click the finish button and then we need to restart our server. So we we'll click yes to restart the server. So now the server has rebooted, we can log back in. So log back in as our administrator at pvolab.com. Administrator password and then we can log in. So we can see now that the app volume service is now starting and now we've logged in. As with the virtual desktop machine you won't actually see any app volumes activity on the main screen. All the service has done is installed and is now running in the background. So now the server is back up, the server manager loads with the remote desktop IIS and the app volumes agent now installed. Now we can provision. So if we switch back to our app volumes management console and make sure that the RDSH provisioning server has been registered with the app volumes manager. So from the dashboard we click on infrastructure and then we click on the machines tab and here we can see our RDSH app stack provisioning machine and when the app volumes agent was registered. So that means we can now go ahead and start provisioning our app stacks on our RDSH based server.